What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of this Lightroom tutorial, we're going to take a look at editing an entire wedding from start to finish inside of Adobe Lightroom. So if you are trying to improve your wedding photography editing or your wedding photography editing workflow, this tutorial is going to be for you. Or even if you're just trying to get a better handle on Lightroom, the various shortcuts, workflows, all that good stuff, we're going to cover it here. I'm going to show you every step of my workflow from start to finish, from the original raw files to culling the photos to editing them inside of Lightroom. So without further ado, let's hit that intro and we'll get into it together. Grab yourself a snack, some popcorn, some mixed nuts, whatever it is, and we can edit together or you can just sit and watch yours truly. Let's get into it. All right, so in front of me, I have all of the files. You can go ahead and skip to the Lightroom portion if you want. I'm gonna start off by, well, doing the entire wedding workflow. So the way that my workflow works right now is I actually have a couple people who shoot weddings for me. And when that is the case, and I'm not the one actually taking the photos, well, they send them to me via Amazon Photos. And the reason that I do it this way is because if I'm in a different country and I happen to be, you know, in in the States or I'm away just traveling, I can still access the photos, download them, and they're synced to the cloud at the same time. And the best thing is if you have Amazon Prime, you can do this for free. So if you actually check out one of my other videos on my channel, you can see how I do this and how I use Amazon for photo sharing and photo backup. So that's what I've got right here. I've got all of the files that I downloaded off of Amazon files that the photographer Levi actually uploaded for me. And I'm gonna go through each and every one of these folders and put all of the raw files into one big folder. Then we're gonna get started culling together. So nothing too simple, nothing too simple, nothing too fancy about this. We're just going to call this folder number one. We're gonna call that raws. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna make a new finder window and go, hello. You got this, Ryan. You've used a computer before. And then I'm going to go one by one through all of these folders and just copy all the photos in there. So I'm going to grab folder number two, click, drag, drop. Easy peasy, beautiful cover girl. Do the same thing 30 million other times. Now, why did I do this instead of just downloading all the photos at once in one folder? Well, because Amazon doesn't let you. That's one of the small downsides of actually using this method is that you can only download like 10 gigabytes of photos at a time. And so you just have to download a few different folders worth of photos. And then combine them like this. Only takes a couple of minutes. It's not really that big a deal. Okay, so I just want to be really careful that I actually get all of them. Because <laughs> there's nothing worse than going through here, missing 200 photos, and then later on being like, oh, shoot, that was a mistake. So I'm just really going to take my time. And I'll just fast forward really quick so you don't have to actually watch me do all of this. It really takes about two, three minutes and then I am done and I'll check to make sure that I've got all the files. So I'll go into this main folder, I'll hit Command A to select all of them and right click and then it says new folder selection 2102 items. If I actually go to the online gallery, I know I've got 2102 photos. So I've got all the photos in here, I'm ready to begin culling. So let's grab these folders, these folders, these photos, this folder, I'm going to drag that into photo mechanic. Now why photo mechanic and not Lightroom? Because it's a lot faster. Now you can use Lightroom just fine. It's exactly the same process. It's just that photo mechanic is actually going to load the JPEG previews of all these raw files. And what that means is that instead of like Lightroom, where it takes forever for it to actually load in between photos, you can go in photo mechanic a lot faster between these shots and just call a lot quicker. So that's why I normally use photo mechanic for that. And we'll back up to photo number one. I'm just going to go through here and everything that's a keeper gets a one. Everything that is not a keeper doesn't get touched at all. That is really the best tip I can give you for actually narrowing down the number of photos you take. Start by assuming all of them are junk and just grab the ones you really want. <laughs> that way you can narrow it down from 2100. My goal is maybe four to 600 final finish photos. Generally, my role when it comes to weddings, I'm not going to intentionally, you know, shortchange them on photos. If there's a good photo, I'm going to edit it and I'm going to give it to the client. However, I'm also not looking to give them a hundred duplicates that are very, very similar to each other because when you receive that as a client, I know from firsthand experience, it's kind of overwhelming. You might have five shots, they're all almost identical. And so you don't really know which one you like the most. And so it actually becomes less enjoyable than if you'd had just one really great shot instead of five really great shots that are all exactly the same. So. Hope that makes sense. We're gonna go through here and cull them. But first, I'm just going to do a quick scroll and make sure that everything is in order, just in case the photos on the cameras weren't synced, because there were two cameras involved in this shoot. And it looks like overall, is this still the ceremony? 
hard to say. No, that is not the ceremony. Speeches, photos, okay. So we should be pretty good. Looks like things are in order, which is great. So let's back up to the top here and go through, see what we got. This is the first time I'm actually seeing these raw files. So you're gonna see them with me and we'll kind of go through it together. Okay, that's all right. Now these aren't necessarily like, holy crap, stunning photos, but they are capturing part of the day. These are beautiful, I like that. That's a really nice shot. Okay, so in this case, I've got this shoe photo, and then I've got this shoe photo. I like that one better, I'm gonna keep it. No need to overwhelm. Okay, makeup shot, ah, it's really not a good photo. Our subject isn't in focus, just the hairdresser, so we're gonna, not gonna keep that. Okay, another detail shot. Honestly, I'm not really a huge fan, but we'll take it. Generally, this shoe shot, not super important, unless they have really cool shoes, but we'll keep it in there. It helps tell the story of the day. As a thing with these details, sometimes you'll be surprised at what a couple actually cares about. They might've spent a lot of time really just figuring out exactly what kind of cups they wanted to have. And it looks like they did because they got all these matching cups that say cheers on them. So that's something important to have a photo of, even though you might not necessarily think, oh, that's something I'll frame and print. Okay, these are great. Guys chilling by the pool, okay. So one quick tip, if you're actually photographing a situation like this, they're all looking down at their bow ties. So just take a second to say, hey guys, look over here, or something like that. Crack a joke, whatever it is, and they'll actually look up, you'll get eye contact, and the photos will be a lot better. Instead of everybody just staring down. That's a great shot. Okay, so these are better, because now they're actually looking up. So I'm not worrying about, you know, culling it perfectly the first time because I'm gonna go back through and do a second pass just to narrow it down later. Okay, so I think this is a bridesmaid, so I might keep that, maybe. Mm, we got a videographer in the background. There, that's better, okay. Beauty, I'm gonna keep a couple of these. Just make sure that everybody's eyes are open. And I'll probably do one in black and white and one in color. Okay, so this one, our far left bridesmaid, kinda of half eyes open. This one, I think everybody's eyes are open in this, good. Eyes closed. And one thing, I'm never going to delete any of the files that I don't keep. I'm gonna keep them, just in case, because oftentimes you're going through and then later on it's like, oh shoot, I didn't notice that mom's eyes were closed in this shot. Or they come back to you and say, actually, do you have a photo of Aunt Becky? And you say, oh, shouldn't have deleted that one. Okay, so. That's nice, nice, love it. It's always nice when you have a great place to get ready and the light is just beautiful. Perfect, that's very pretty. Top tip, if you have the choice, always use window light and shut the overhead lights off. Levi did a great job by doing that because if it was mixed light in this room and we had the overhead lights and the window light, it would be really messy, but this is gonna be super clean and beautiful for editing. It's gonna be easy. Okay, I think this one, probably not, because she's in the middle of saying something. Love that half smile. We'll keep one of mom. Again, I'm pretty much at this, like the first call pass. I'm getting rid of any obvious, like, no, don't want that. And the rest of the photos I'm going to worry about a little bit later. Like this one, I am going to make sure her eyes are open. Looks like they're closed. So grab this. Little tip for you that we could have used in this particular photo. The bride is a beautiful, beautiful girl. But just because of the way that she's standing, she's standing in front of the groom and in front of mom, and she's not tilted sideways. See how mom is kind of sideways to the groom, and so it makes her just more slender? Well, if you had put the bride in behind the groom, it would have made the groom look larger and the bride look a little bit more petite. Not that she needs it, she's beautiful, but it just would have been a little bit more flattering if that had happened. So, little tip for you. Love it. Okay, what do we got? Looks like they were staring straight into the sun. Probably would have been better actually to have them facing the other direction, this particular shot, and have the photographer here. But of course, we don't know what's in the background, so might not have been possible. In generally, in generally, in general, you don't want people to have to stare into the sun because then you get these squinty eyes. Love it. Fake laughs. 
Girls are always the best at fake laughing. They've had so much practice. <laughs> this guy looks really fun. I like him. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay, tell me we got a serious one. Okay, good. <laughs> so busy showing off their socks. It's awesome. It's nothing better when the wedding party is actually having fun. Those are the photos that are way better to take. And so much of it obviously comes down to them as people, but at the same time, the energy that you bring and the vibe and the confidence that you bring makes such a big difference in the photos. If you second guess yourself, they're going to second guess you all day and it'll be really awkward. But if you just ignore the awkward at first and you act like you're having the best time, and they're your best friends, you'll be amazed at how people respond. Oh, these are awesome. So I'm going to keep a few in this series. I might even put together a gift because it'd be kind of funny and fun. Anything you can do to give the client just an extra little something. And gifts are really easy to make. You just go online, gift creator in Google. There's several different programs you can do it with. And then add those to your blog or post it on Facebook. And most of the time, normal wedding photos don't get shared that often, but gifts do, especially if it's with the wedding party too. So get them to walk, get them to laugh, get them to jump, whatever, make it into a GIF and share it on social and you'll be surprised how much more engagement you get. Okay, so tell me we got one. That's nice. Okay, so again, having him with his shoulder in front of her and her shoulder in behind his would have made him just appear a little bit larger in the frame. When you have couples who are about the same height, that can be very helpful. Oh, okay, so we're definitely out of order here because suddenly we're at the end of the aisle. Where are the rest of our photos? Okay, he's walking down. Or maybe that's exiting. Where's our ceremony part two? Okay, so we've got more photos together. There's more photo shoot. Where's the rest of our ceremony? Okay. That is a little bit confusing. So what we can do is instead of organizing by file name, which is my bad, we can set it to capture time. Scroll up here. We have a whole bunch of different photos in here. Yes, we do. So now I have the joy of just going back a little bit to the photos that I hadn't yet gone through. So that's how it goes sometimes, folks. Make sure you grab that. This is their wedding vows. If a couple has wedding vows, 100% of the time, make sure you take a photo of both sets of vows, his and hers, because I can tell you from personal experience getting married, I wish that I had had a photo of those vows. Okay. Generally, you know, you only want to keep the photos of them getting ready if they're actually flattering, but they can also just choose not to share them. So I err on the shot side of giving them more photos rather than less. Okay, here's our groom prep photos. Fruit, gotta have it. So shots like this, even though it's not perfectly in focus, I'm gonna keep it because the moment's what matters more. And then, oh, that's beautiful, love that. And then, if for whatever reason, I can't make it look good, just put it in black and white, all of a sudden it's an artsy decision. That's the secret. Turning lemons into lemonade. So we'll just put these guys in here. Even though this isn't like a stellar shot, I can crop our videographer out. And, you know, this might be an important person. I'm assuming it is because he's there before the ceremony. Probably a brother, something like that. Ooh. Nice socks. So that's the main difference when you're using photo mechanic versus using Lightroom. Me going back and culling these photos a second time, not actually such a big deal because it's so fast between photos. Whereas if you're using Lightroom, it takes a long time to go from one shot to the next. It has gotten better in recent versions of Lightroom, but I'm still finding photo mechanic to be a lot faster. 
Yeah, see, this makes so much more sense now that we actually have groom prep. <laughs> it's just so much better. Lots of great shots. He likes to smile. That's good. Oh, okay, so we got groom shots here as well. Shots with dad. All these things we would have missed. Now, when it comes to the boutonnieres and the details in general, quick tip for you, like take the photo of the detail by itself. And if you're really good at styling details, good for you. I find that if I can get a photo of it in action, like somebody's actually interacting with that object, whatever it is, it's going to be a more compelling photo. So I love these detail shots where they're actually putting the boutonnieres on. That's beautiful. So much light in there. Love it. Love it. Okay. Oh, perfect. So like her actually holding the dress and walking with the dress to me so much more engaging than the dress just standing there. Another quick tip for you, the plastic clear hanger, it's okay. I like to actually keep a wooden hanger in my bag because most of the time the dress, for whatever reason, they spend two grand on a dress and it comes on a cheap plastic hanger. So I'll put it onto a wooden hanger and it'll look a lot better. There it is. Look at the color. These are going to be so great to edit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got a good joke. If I can multitask. So what are Mario's favorite type of pants to wear. You ready? You got it? Here it goes. What are Mario's favorite parts? <laughs> favorite types of pants to wear? Denim, denim, denim. That's it. That's all I got. It's my best joke for the day. If this has been helpful so far, or you enjoyed that joke, go ahead and leave me a comment below. Okay, so we got a first look, and we got the world's most intrusive videographer, so that's really fun. Side note, if this happens, just get them to do it again. Get them to walk back, say, hey, videographer man, I'm just going to get her to walk a second time. Or preferably have a conversation with the videographer ahead of time and say, hey, my friend, can we do it just with us from a distance? I'll use the same lens as you. I'll stand in the same place as you the first time so it can naturally unfold. We'll both capture it. And then we can go back, repeat it, and kind of pretend to do it again. And that's when you go in nice and close and you follow her with the dress and all that good stuff. Cute, very cute. That's awesome. First looks are a mixed bag. Sometimes the guy really reacts. Other times he's like, oh, hey. <laughs> That's what I did at my wedding. It's kind of embarrassing for me. Because every bride wants the groom to just, you know, start crying or something. But I guess I'm just too strong. Love it. <laughs> there it is right there. Okay, and we're back. Ooh, camera number two. Okay, are they both? This is a Mark IV. This is a Mark III. So massive difference, hey, in the color between the Mark III and the IV. IV has so much more pop and punch. The raw files are also about five times the size, but we won't get into that. Yeah, these look beautiful. Like, they don't even need editing. I could totally just use them like this. Man, nice. Okay, one thing. This particular shot, it looks like, and this is just a hunch, that the camera was slightly higher and angled down a little bit. And that makes all three of these beautiful people look a little bit short. So had Levi just dropped a little bit and shot up, if you've got short people, it's going to make them a little bit longer, make them feel a little bit taller. And especially for dad, that's what you want. 
Also having dad on the higher side of the hill, whatever that is, would have been great as well. Man, these photos are so much better than the ones on the hill. Love it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there it is, there's the money. I mean, I could do a GIF of this. Maybe. For now, no. Okay, now this is just me being nitpicky, but when you're doing group photos like this, always make sure you get their feet and a little bit of room underneath their feet. I can always crop in a little bit. I can never crop out. If you're going to crop, then just go as tight as you can. But no big deal. These are still beautiful photos. And they're actually going to be really nice to edit because the weather that day was quite nice. These guys are hilarious. This is one of those weddings that I wish that I had photographed just because it looks like it was such a fun day. What's your funniest wedding story? I'm really curious. Leave it in the comments below. Let's share. Mm -hmm. My funniest wedding story that's not so funny at all is I was at a wedding in Sydney, Australia and I had my keys in my hand and my camera bag, I let it down in the car and we were going to the photo shoot. And I closed the car door and somehow at the same time that I did that, it was one of those cars where like you lock it before you get out of the car because the fob doesn't work, whatever. And so I did that and as I was closing the door, somehow I dropped the keys inside of the car. And so I locked myself out of the car with my camera bag inside of the car and I was in the middle of the photo shoot, and so I had to get a friend who happened to be at my house an hour away to drive his motorcycle down into the city as fast as he could so that I could get into my car to recover my keys and recover my camera gear. So that was kind of painful. Never made that mistake. Again, knock on wood. Beauty, I love it. kind of like this like it's actually sort of cute I don't know if the bride will like it that's the thing about being a guy sometimes I just I don't have the sense of whether or not the bride is going to love the photo or she's like ah please don't show me photos of me adjusting my hair maybe I'll get a second opinion let me know in the comments below is the adjusting hair photo cute or is it not Good. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> so as I'm going through here, I'll take a photo if I think it's good. And then if I find a better one later on, then I'll come back and I'll just get out of it. So for instance, this one, he's kind of like almost about to smile, saying something. This one, he's more laughing. And that one, he's full on laughing. So I'll keep that one. So that's how I like to do it. Keep it. And then if you're like, oh, that one's better, you just go back really quick and say no. Nah. And again, all I'm doing is just marking ones and zeros. So these are all out of focus, unfortunately. So I'm going to go with one of these. I would rather turn an in focus landscape into a portrait. Then I would keep a portrait photo and then try and turn it back into focus if it's not. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so let's talk about things in this photo. His jacket, just because he's sitting and it's putting stress on the suit, should have been unbuttoned. It would have felt a lot more comfortable. Also, having him take up more space on the seat would have made him larger in the frame. So for example, having his arm 
outstretched on the bench here would have really made him just larger in the photo. You could also, like, you kind of got to play it by ear, but if you got her to scooch over a little bit so she's more laying on him, so if her butt were actually here on the seat instead, that would just take her down a couple of inches and make him a couple inches taller in the frame. So little things like that can be helpful. Sometimes hard to remember, always hard to remember when you're in the middle of a shoot. It's easy to say it in hindsight, much harder to actually just see it in person. I think these photos are great. At the end of the day, they know how, how tall they are, so it's okay. But if you can, like again, these photos, it looks like she's sitting on the rock and he is standing beside the rock, so why not have him higher up and her a little bit lower? These are things I think about because I'm vertically challenged, and so it's something that if I'm in a photo, I always want to make sure that I'm presented in the best possible way. It makes you feel good as a shorter dude. Yeah, see, this is better because he's leading in the photo and he's ahead of her. He appears larger and taller. And here where he's more beside in orientation to the camera, he's still closer, so that's good. You always want to keep the one you want to be taller closer in the frames that are a little bit larger just naturally. So you see the difference between this shot and these shots? Just depending on who is closer to the camera. See, I'm not really a fan of these. I don't know. They look too smooshy. Like their lips are just too... You need soft kisses. That's better. Okay, we got a laugh there. That might be worth keeping. There it is. There it is. Okay. We'll come back. We'll deal with the rest of these later. I'm not much of a Veil fan myself, but it can be kind of interesting. And if she wanted a Veil, then clearly she's a Veil fan. So use that Veil. All right, we got some nice table settings. Now here's a note about details. First off, if you're doing a lot of weddings that just don't have that nice of details, um, I feel for you. <laughs> I've been there. Uh, you just got to try and make the very best that you can. Be creative with it. And I wish I had more practical advice, but just give yourself more time and view it as a challenge. If you can make those photos look good, then when you actually get to the point where you're doing other weddings that are a little bit fancier, have nicer details, it's going to be easy. Second thing, if you want to get good detail shots, make sure you build it into the timeline on the day. You need the time to do it. You need to do it before people get there. So I always actually add that time in the timeline. I want to have 20 or 30 minutes just to do details, both in the morning before I have to do prep photos and later in the reception time. Now, some people are like 20, 30 minutes. That's nowhere near enough. And it's true. As you can see, I don't get like the most amazing detail shots. And that's why. But I'm not known for my details that's not the reason that people hire us for photos all right so guests arriving love it and again especially if you've got a smaller wedding my goal every single wedding is i want to have a shot of every guest there because every guest there was invited for a reason and if especially if you've only got say 100 people or less or 120 it really shouldn't be that hard for you to snap a shot of everybody it's going to make a big difference looking back at the photos from my wedding the photos that I actually treasure the most are the ones of guests, not the ones of me. The ones of the people who were there that I might never see again, or in some cases have now passed on. <laughs> Just the way this is kind of looks, it almost looks like she's got smoke coming out of her fingers. Anyways, that's all I have to say about that. Love it. Love it. Another thing, if you have the chance, just remind people before they walk up the aisle to smile because you'll be amazed. Everybody's focused on not tripping as they walk down the aisle and they just won't smile that much. These guys nailed it. Love it. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Do we have smilers? What do you think? Oh, no. See, she's just really focused. I love the commitment, but it just doesn't make for the best photo. That's all. Okay, she's smiling, he's out of focus. That's probably our best bet. We might keep two. Oh, that's way better. Good. Oh yeah, there's the money. That's that's just beauty. Okay. And we got these two lovely people. 
Numero uno. Oh. <laughs> Spraying the world with flower petals. <laughs> I can't tell if he's like joking around or <laughs> if he's serious. <laughs> okay. This looks like a hilarious wedding. Literally the best. Also looks like they really did not gauge how many petals to use. <laughs> they saved them all and they're like, oh shoot. Gotta use them all now. Oh, beauty. Love it. I love it. These guys just seem like really nice people, hey? Like, I would be friends with them. I would tell them bad jokes. So it's possible you're saying to yourself, man, he's taking a long time culling these photos. Why doesn't he just edit them and just give them more photos or whatever? <laughs> and the truth is that the every minute that I spend culling photos is going to save me like 10 minutes of editing because it's so much easier to just get rid of photos than it is to edit photos. And so the lower that number is, not only are the clients going to be happier, as backwards as that seems, but I'm going to be able to spend more time on photos that matter and less time fixing photos that just shouldn't have been kept to begin with. Wow, what a difference between these two cameras. It'll be really interesting to see what they edit like. He's a crier. I love it. What a sweetheart. Wedding vows are hard, man. You think you can be strong and then you just break. So did mom. <laughs> I love grandma so much. <laughs> she reminds me of the grandma from my big fat Greek wedding. Just such a sweet old lady. In the prime of her youth. In the prime of her grandmahood. Love it. Oh my gosh. What a couple of awesome, spectacular humans. And all the flower petals. Now this is another trick that I gave to Levi. <laughs> so one time I was shooting a wedding and I totally missed the first kiss. Like totally missed it. I don't know what was happening. I was switching lenses, whatever it was. And so as they're walking down the aisle, I just stopped them and said, Hey guys, do another kiss. And so they went in, they kissed and I wound up getting quote unquote, the first kiss. I got it at the end of the aisle and then I got them to do it again at the other end of the aisle. And as a result, they had no idea and it was perfect. So now every time I do that, and the other great part is, especially if there's bubbles or there's flower petals being thrown or whatever, you get them to stop and you have an extra second to try and capture that and for the guests to throw a few flower petals, whatever. And you get the guests in the background. It's great. Because sometimes the first kiss shot, not so great. For whatever reason. I have a feeling we're going to have a ton of photos for these guys simply because... They're hilarious. I believe I did a great job in actually using this time when everybody's chilling, grabbing drinks, whatever, to get shots of guests. Everybody thinks that the photo shoot stuff is the most important. And, you know, it is important. That's part of the reason that they hire you. But honestly, getting stuff for your family and friends, those are the shots that years from now are really going to matter. A whole lot more than some post photo shoot shots. Both will matter, but at 
It's at least been my experience. Beautiful. And I think with this particular couple, they didn't really want to do a whole lot of photo shoot. So we might not even have any photo shoot other than that first look stuff that we did before. So these are going to be really fun because we have so much green and yellow. And by that, I mean, it's going to be interesting. And I'll show you a few tricks for getting greens to actually look good instead of just the worst. Because that was always my struggle when I was starting to edit and figuring out how to use Lightroom is these greens look so horrible. Why? <laughs> that is a really cool cake. And really delicious looking cupcakes. What flavor do you think they are? Like coffee? Macchiato? Beauty. Here's our speeches. Mom and Dad. So in general, when you're doing your speeches, my goal is to get a tight, a medium, and a wide of everybody who's up there. And of course, as many guests in between as possible too. Just keep your eyes open for stuff like this. She does not look happy there. I don't know why. Caught her in between expressions. There it is. <laughs> okay, that's uncanny. <laughs> and very hilarious. I have no idea what the story is, but I really want to know now. So just because we had the nice landscape in the background and the house here, it would have been nicer to have Levi standing here and also not have that camera in the back, but he probably moved around or there's a reason for being here. There you go. Blocked out that camera. What a legend. <laughs> Starting her first dance, but she's like, wait, I'm crying so much. Sweet. So I'm just keeping a lot of these and then we'll go through later and decide, okay, which do we want to keep, which don't we? Again, I don't know why shooting this direction was a thing. Maybe you didn't want to be in the way of the guests. That doesn't make much sense. 
Here's the spin. Nailed it. This guy looks like a character. Now the key to good dance photos, take a thousand of them. This would have been really great as a landscape just to have a really nice wide of the entire setting. <laughs> this is awesome. I don't know what's happening, but I like it. Looks like we're getting ready for a bouquet toss, maybe? Is that what's going down? Oh, yeah. So, moral of the story, when you do said bouquet toss, always do a wide angle lens. Like, it's really cool if you can get it tight later on, but better do wide and have everything in focus. That's amazing. Now I don't really understand why the groom wasn't being picked up, but there it is. Unfortunately, not in focus. Don't know how to deal with this. All we got is the backs of heads. <laughs> Need that cake shot. It's one thing everybody says, you know, my house is burning down. Forget the photo album. Forget the other wedding photos. I just want the photo of me cutting cake. For some reason, it's a thing. It's a really big deal. <laughs> Is he jumping? Is he doing it? Ladies and gentlemen? Oh, yeah. Good form. Excellent. <laughs> This guy's like, what an idiot. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it's a thing. I love this. Question is how many beers to provoke said pool party? Oh, oh. 
Where is he headed? Is he headed to the water? Is it gonna happen, people? Looks like no. And that's it. That's literally the last photo for some reason. <laughs> I love it. That's the crowning achievement of the day. Pink Polaroid. Okay, so I've gone through. I've called all of the photos. Now I'm going to see how many I got. The answer is, holy crap, 1,327 down from 2,000. So I got rid of less than half. So I'm going to have to go through again and hopefully get rid of half of these. So we're going to repeat the same process, only this time I'm going to be sorting through basically the ones that are too similar to each other. So in this case, we've got, for instance, four of these that I don't remember saying I wanted, but I guess I did. So we'll go through, and everything that I want to get rid of is going to now be a zero. So everything here is marked as a one, I believe. Oh, that's why. Oh, it's the opposite. Whew. And that's good. Okay, so all of these are the keepers. 775 down from 2200. So I'm going to go through once more. Hopefully I'll get that number down around 500. And again, we're going to go through everything that is a little bit too similar. Like that one. I'll just take the best of the two. Okay, those are two different vowels. Going to keep both of those. Only need one of these flower shots. I like that one better. It's better lit. And I think you can piece together exactly what's going on here. If something's too similar, like these two, eh, I might get rid of one. So we got two dress photos. Ah, I think we'll keep them both. They're both pretty. Okay, we got two of her getting her makeup done. I don't really think this one's that nice, so we'll go with that one. Do it add here. I think that's the nicer one. We'll keep that. This one, not much going on in this shot. Mm. Oh, to a dad, almost the same. This one is better smile. Those are almost identical again, so we'll go with one where he's looking up. Okay, these are all very similar, so we'll go with that one, keeper. That one, no keeper because of this dust. And this one, keeper. And because he's the groom, we'll keep all of those. Make sure everybody's eyes are open. Yeah, kinda. It's not a great shot because the light's really harsh and it's overexposed, but for now we'll keep these two very similar. Let's so we'll get rid of one. Okay, how many boutonniere shots do we need? I think that one's closer, but this one's sort of nicer. Eh, we'll get rid of that one. Okay, these are all very similar, so we'll keep them. She's the bride after all. Okay, very similar. So let's grab the one of these that's the nicest. I'm going to go with probably this one. Okay, and then the one of these. This one, she's laughing. Between these two. I think in this one. Okay, that. It's kind of mid-motion. These are very similar. I feel like her eyes look more genuine in this one. So we'll keep that one. Get rid of this one. Very similar shot. Um, I think that one's nicer. Although we have all this clutter and it's in focus in the shot. So hard to say. I'll probably keep this one. Eyes closed in that one. Mm, this one's a tad more unfocused. Eyes are open. Not in love with this one. Don't think it's super flattering, so I'll get rid of that. These are super similar. I'm going to go with the wider one. I can always crop it in. And again, this is an example of when you get lower to the ground, how much better people who are shorter look. So here's above and here's below. I mean, she looks beautiful in both, but the taller, more slender one is my personal preference. So I might even get rid of this one because they're all very similar. Now the first look, I could cull it down, but I kind of want to capture all these little moments in between. So I'm probably going to keep more than strictly necessary. 
I think that tells the story pretty good. That one, he's like in the middle of saying something, so I'll keep this one instead. Okay, this one. This is where we zoom in, and sure enough, Dad's eyes closed. Also looks like we're sort of out of focus. So that one, we're gonna get rid of. Basically, I'm just going through everybody's face, seeing which feels the better overall. I think this one, people are more genuine smiles. Oh, but she's adjusting her hair. Oh no. So keep that one, get rid of this one. I'm gonna get rid of this one because this one, they're kind of like in the middle of the act. This one, they're just kind of like, oh, what's going on? Beauty, beauty. Okay. Mom smiles a lot more real in this one, but our bridesmaid eyes are closed, so we'll keep both, I think, because I actually like this one a lot. Ah, uh, tough decision. Oh, and the glasses are off of Dad, so we're gonna keep this one and this one. Okay, these are super similar and I don't really love this one, so keep that. Again, very similar. I'm gonna go with this one. I kinda like that his lips are parted very slightly. I'm gonna keep both of these, one for black and white, one for color. Okay, these are all very similar. So this one she's looking nowhere. Let's see what we got. We got one. Yeah. That one I like. Decisions, decisions. Eyes closed. Good. I'm just looking at eyes, seeing who's visually looking at the camera, who's not. Shots like this that happened in a sequence of events, I kind of like to have all of them just because it's actually more rewarding to see her being picked up than if I just had one of those shots. And they'll all edit pretty much the same, so it's no big deal in terms of workflow. Okay, very similar. I'm gonna go with that one. Eyes are kind of closed, get rid of that.
So if I have two very similar, I'll take the one that's more impactful. So in my opinion, that one out of those two. And here's where he starts to smile from it. And that might actually be okay because you want to have the sequence. Almost identical. Let's just go with that one. Went with the second one because there's just a little bit more of the hands in the shot. This I don't think I'm going to keep simply because it's a shot of the back of their heads. Not much going on. Kind of boring. This her eyes are kind of closed. We're like half open. I think I'm going to get rid of that. Now this is just a Ryan's opinion thing, but if you can get people to walk, get them to walk off the path amongst the foliage. It'll look better than walking on a concrete path. All right. So I'm going to keep both because this shows the Polaroids. This shows a close-up of what the book says. This is all the details of how they decorated the nice house. I'm just going to visually scroll through. If I find something that looks a little bit like there's too much repeat, then I'll delete it. Otherwise, I'll keep rolling. It's like these. He's happy in this one. We'll keep that one. cracks me up. That must have been hilarious. feel like I should say something, but there's really nothing to say. These are cupcakes, and I know that I have shots of them later on in the day when they're outside on the table and much nicer, so we're going to scratch those. Um, that shot's in focus. This one is not. I'll scratch that. You know what's kind of interesting is there's no shots of food. There's dessert, but no food. Hmm, he said. They must have fasted. They just did dessert. That's my dream wedding. <laughs> M&M cereal. Mm. 
if you don't watch The Office, that quote totally lost on you. <laughs> Cracks me up. I have no idea what's it in reference to, but cracks me up. Okay, so second pass a lot faster. I'm just gonna hit this again. Let's see what we got. We got 679. I'm thinking that's okay. I could take one more look at it, but I'm pretty sure I narrowed it down to the photos that I like. I don't have too many duplicates that are very similar here, unless they are kind of part of a sequence, like this guy jumping into the Cannonball City. So I'm gonna grab these photos and move them into Lightroom. So let's copy move selected photos. Obviously, this won't apply to you unless you're using Photo Mechanic. However, I still would kind of recommend if you're inside of Lightroom, do something similar. So I'm going to select Move Photos, Delete Originals. Don't freak out. We're not deleting them. What we're actually just doing is moving them into a new folder. We're going to call this folder the Selects folder. These are all the photos that I am choosing to keep. So we'll hit Open and move those. And I like to do this in an actual folder rather than just marking them as keepers or rejects because I like to physically have the selects separate from the rejects. Now I'm going to go over to these photos, copy them, and we're going to do the same thing. Move delete originals. We're going to do the same thing except for we're going to make a new folder called rejects. Now I keep the rejects separate from the selects because then if I ever want to let's say edit this on a different computer, I can grab just the selects folder. I don't have to grab all the photos from the entire day, just the ones I'm actually editing. The rest of them can just stay on my backup hard drive. So dem be moved. And now we're gonna head over into Lightroom. So go over into my grid view. We're gonna import our selects. Like a so and get started editing together. Now you could apply a preset on import. I'm not going to do that. The reason is I don't know what preset I want to apply yet. So not super helpful if I were to do that. It would start generating previews that I don't need. And I'm actually going to select minimal for build previews because first I'm going to apply a preset to all these photos then I'm going to generate the previews. If you don't know what previews are, basically Lightroom is going to make a preview of a, basically a smaller resolution preview of all of these photos with the preset applied. The reason it does that is so that you can actually 
view and switch between photos faster inside of Lightroom. Whereas if it was loading the entire raw file every time, it is just slower to work with. So I've got all the photos in here. They are all in order for the day, which is great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to find a preset that I think is representative of the day and works well. As you can see, this <laughs> preset is not looking good. Now the reason that it's actually creating this banding is because we've got a minimal preview being loaded. So if I zoom in here, theoretically, yeah, once it actually loads the full preview, it's going to go away. Not that this looks good. It's definitely too harsh for what we're going for. We could dial it back, but I'm thinking it's still too warm too. I don't really love it. This is from the Signature Edits wedding pack. Basically, as a result of editing hundreds of weddings, I've gone through, I've decided what I actually like, what I don't like, created a preset system that is super simple and easy. And the goal is to keep the colors pretty consistent with what they were naturally. Because a lot of preset packs out there, let's find some photos that are a little bit more fun to edit. Hey, hello. I don't know, this one. A lot of preset packs out there. The bride spent a lot of time choosing these dresses very carefully. And if you change the colors too much, she's going to be like, WTF, I actually had these dresses in whatever color this is, <laughs> burgundy, not in some kind of weird purpley tone. So I'm thinking number three looks really good. So I'm going to dial it back a bit. And the way that these presets are organized is I've actually got a custom profile with an amount slider. So for every photo, I can adjust the amount of preset really quickly and easily. And you can see that all of these other sliders, unlike a lot of other presets, all these sections are pretty much left alone. So I have the full ability to go through and edit these however I like for every photo. Whereas with some presets, you know, you've got all of your settings like this. And then if you want to make an individual adjustment, it's like, okay, well, how do I take the texture down? It's already at minus 100. So anyways, you can check those out at signaturedits.com slash presets. I don't know. <laughs> or you can just make your own. I don't care. This is my workflow. Whatever works for you. All good. I'll even leave a promo code in the link below in the description if you're interested. So now what I'm going to do that I found a preset that I like the looks of, I'm going to take it and I'm going to apply it to everything and make sure that my lens corrections are on. And I'm also going to take the vignetting and just take it down a little bit. Because I find in general, Lightroom t tends to overcompensate and make the edges of the image a little bit brighter than I like them. So I'm just going to take that down to say like 80. I'm going to grab my sharpening. You might say, holy crap, 85, that's a lot of sharpening. I've also got a lot of masking going on. So if you hold down Alt, you'll see that I've masked out a lot of the image. So only a little bit is being sharpened. The rest is being left alone. But I can go through here, and depending on the camera type, I can make some adjustments before I apply it to everything. So I'm going to sync this right across. Everything except for exposure and white balance and crop is going to be selected. Local adjustments, don't have any of those right now anyways, so it's okay. I'm going to sync that. Lightroom is going to apply it to all my images. And then after I just go through and select a few to make sure that it's actually going to work, so you can see that the Mark III images a lot different than the Mark IV. Of course, we need to warm up our white balance, increase the strength of that preset a bit. Looks okay, a little bit washed out, but that's just the difference of the camera. Basically, I'm going to go through and just see if this preset's going to work across all of the images. And after I know, okay, I'm going to stick with this, that's when I'm going to go back and actually create my smart previews. here's before here's after so you can see it keeps the tones pretty natural i'm actually going to grab the contrast bring it down and bring the strength of the preset up that's going to help with my highlights a little bit so i don't blow it out quite as far i'm going to grab my highlights pull those down too because i know for most of the day i'm going to be doing that so anything that i know i'm going to be applying to the entire image <laughs> to the entire image to most of the images from the wedding i'm going to try and apply that now somewhere around there should be good. Here's before and after. So you can see it's pretty subtle. We're making the greens a little bit more deep and rich. We're making some slight adjustments, different tones in the images, but overall colors are the same. Things are accurate and we're not blowing anything out too bad. Okay. Somewhere around there. So now I'm going to sync that. And again, just going to go through a few images at random here throughout the day see how it feels unedited edited
Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I think we can maybe take the vibrance up a little bit overall, and we can maybe do a slight exposure bump because things in general seem to be pretty dark. Try that. I'm trying to find a middle ground, just a starting place, and then I'm going to go through image by image. But this is just going to get me my overall look for the shoot. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I can go ahead and create some smart previews. That'll just speed up the load time between these images and hopefully get rid of this beautiful banding effect we've got going on. And then I'm going to go through one by one, adjust the white balance, the exposure, and anything else as we need to. So let's do this thing. I'm going to go over to the library module, and then I'm going to go up to where it says library, previews, and build standard size previews. Now, if I were on my laptop, which is a 2015 MacBook Pro, it's a little bit older, I would build smart previews, which is going to make an even smaller preview that will run even faster. However, since I'm on an iMac and I've got lots of RAM, I can just use these standard size previews and that'll speed things up while still showing me kind of the full resolution image. So I'm going to fast forward, wait till that's done, and we'll get started. All right, so the previews are created. Now I'm just going to start editing together with you. So photo number one, literally what I'm going to do first pass of editing is just adjust the exposure, adjust any obvious things. We've still got banding even though those previews were made. I don't know why. Uh, it looks a little bit soft, so we're just going to increase the texture just a little bit. Somewhere around there. Looks good. Before, after. And it's maybe a little bit too warm. They're kind of orange, so we could cool it down just a touch. I'm going to copy those settings in case I need them on another photo and keep going. So just going to go through adjust things as necessary. And it's really just about getting the main look dialed in. Not too fussed about spending a ton of time on any particular photo, but I'm going to do some things like radio filter. One of my favorite things, literally just darken everything down. Because your eye is drawn to the brightest part of the photo, so by doing that we really just place the focus more on the ring. It's subtle. But it works. Same with this. We'll do the same thing. Radio filter. Exposure down on the outside. Before, after. This one, another radio filter. You'll see I really like using radio filters and subtle effects. Because if you keep it subtle, it just feels more natural. Now you're going to see there's a bit of a color cast to this particular set of flowers. I think that's because there's a tungsten light on somewhere in here. So I'm going to cool it down. I've increased the exposure. We're going to drop the highlights a little bit so I don't blow anything out. And then we're going to darken the entire image before and after. So again, nothing super fancy, world changing, but it looks all right. It looks pretty nice and natural. That's the goal. Now, if a photo looks really harsh, we've got mixed light, something like that. I'm going to default to a black and white, so I'm going to find a black and white setting that I just like the looks of. So let's check what these ones are like, see what we like for this particular wedding. I'm thinking probably number three. It's clean, it's classic. And again, I've got this nice slider so I can slightly adjust the intensity up and down for each photo. Again, we've got a color cast on these girls up front. So we're going to cool them down a little bit. And of course, I need to invert my mask. So let's do that.
Love this shot. I think it's so pretty. Okay, so first thing, I'm going to darken everything else down just so the shoes pop a little bit more. And I am going to increase the contrast on this particular shot a little bit. Lastly, I'm going to grab a brush and just go on to an add texture brush. This is a preset I made. They come with the presets. Or you can just pause the video, copy my settings, save it as your own preset. That's just going to enhance the contrast, the color, saturation a little bit of those shoes. Okay, in this one, might need to just smooth her skin very slightly. So I'll go down here to a skin soften brush really quickly, just smooth out. When you have side light, it can really just bring out in a negative way the texture of skin. Okay. Looks a little cold, we'll warm it up, add a little bit of pop, increase the contrast. Good. Straighten it out. I have a thing with straight lines. So we've got this post here. We're going to use that as our marker and see how it feels. That yeah, works for me. I'm not too worried about making these into a work of art because let's get real for a second. They're not. They're just photos of how things happen on the day. So yeah, I'm going to brighten up the areas that need brightening, adjust the exposure a little bit, get things dialed in, but I'm not going to worry about trying to turn this into something that is not. And that's okay. I think that when I started off, I wasted a lot of time and got really frustrated over trying to turn photos into things that they just weren't. <laughs> so if a photo naturally doesn't have great lighting, doesn't have a great background, doesn't have really awesome colors going on, it's not worth trying to fight with. Like you can enhance some things, but if you're trying to make a chocolate cake, but all you have is the ingredients for pea soup, it's just not going to happen. So as we're doing this, let's just talk workflow. Alt and Option, that is the most handy key that you should know on your keyboard. Because when you do that, all sorts of magical things happen. Just try it on literally every tool, and almost every tool you use it on, there's going to be a secret menu that appears. So with the HSL panel, you have these reset toggles show up for pretty much every single panel. That's how you get the reset to show up. Uh, plus and minus on your keyboard, exposure, or if you press period, it will adjust whatever you want it to adjust. I set it to exposure because that's the thing that I'm changing the most. And graduated filters, radial filters. They don't seem too sexy or fancy, but really, those are the best method. You really, when it comes to editing, I found the best method is you want to start with the broad strokes and then do the detailed work as necessary. So you're not going to fix every single problem by grabbing an adjustment brush and brushing one section and another. Start by doing broad changes to the entire image and then to bigger parts of the image and then slightly smaller and slightly smaller until you get to the real fine details. Okay, feels pretty good. A little bit soft. We can maybe sharpen a tiny bit. And our gentleman here on the right, pretty dark. So. One of the things that's important and that will really help your photos is just start by fixing the lighting first and then worry about the creative parts of the image. This is literally just the most stunning detail shot. Absolutely love it. So I'm gonna take this texture brush, I'm gonna paint it on the shoes just to add a little bit more pop to them. And at the same time, let's take the contrast down and the exposure up a little bit to make them brighter and then darken the entire image down. So here's before and here's after. We could take it a step farther I'm feeling it right there, so so I won't. That's perfect. This, we got a blue cast from the window light. So just going to warm it up a little bit. Somewhere around there. And then what I might do is just do a radial filter on this dress. Reset it. Take the texture way down and invert it. Take the clarity down a little bit. Dehaze down a little bit. Try inverting the other way. The contrast down. So basically what I'm trying to do here is just to make these dresses a little bit less noticeable. A little bit more blurry. Something like that before and after. Okay, now that I'm seeing it, I like the other shot better of the dress. Don't really like this one. A little green. Change the white balance a little bit. Okay. Just going to copy those settings so I've got them. Maybe pull the highlights back a little too. 
Now, if you want to have really nice creamy highlights, you kind of go for that bright and airy look. Make a point on your tone curve, clip it, and then you can take it down and you'll get more of a buttery highlight instead of just like a pure white highlight. Another thing, you don't have to necessarily do it that way. Let's just reset, make a point and do a gentle roll more like that. See how nice and creamy it gets. Just depends on your style. We'll copy that. Use it elsewhere. Now if you're worried about this banding, that's just from the previews. It's Lightroom being weird and stupid. But it looks like we might have some noise in this photo. I don't know. Maybe it's just grain. I'm going to crop in a little bit, straighten around. But of course, since we're using a wide angle lens, we've got all sorts of weirdness, so we'll just leave it. Love it. That works for me. Okay, this shot, again, not much going on. I'm not going to try and make it too fancy. Just make them slightly brighter in the frame. So you'll notice that like the number one thing I'm doing on here is radial filters. My go-to setting is just the contrast down. Maybe the white's up a little bit, highlight's up a little bit. And that'll just give me a nice spotlight effect that I can put wherever I want to. Then you invert it with the apostrophe key. Before, after. So we just kind of place the focus on our subject. And we could crop in and hide videographer guy just a little bit. Why not the whole way? Because I don't have that much room. Okay, so obviously this is underneath the roof, so it's darker up here. I'm just going to grab that graduated filter, bring it down. That'll just make things a little bit smoother, more even. Good. Take the highlights up on this one. Highlights up. And these, maybe we could do the same thing. Graduate filter from the top. There. Before. After. And I think to myself, what a wonderful cup photo. Okay, so all this nonsense is Lightroom being real dumb. Looks a little cool. And a little bit purpley. Better. Now, I'm not liking how saturated these greens are outside, so we could go down to our HSL and desaturate the yellows a little bit or make them brighter. socks crack me up. They must have a dog. Or he just was feeling really special when he bought those socks. Either way, I'm impressed. It takes a real man to rock pink little foo-foo dog socks. Okay, so this guy, everything on this side of the image is dark. We'll just grab a radial filter to solve that problem. Great, graduated filter. I'm going to grab another radio filter and put it on our dad here to brighten him up even more. And darken everything down. So it's not perfect, but it's better. And then we're going to hide the worst of this lens distortion. Like so. Before, after. So I'm going to copy these settings, including the white balance, because all the photos that are outside are probably going to have pretty similar settings. Just going to 
fix his skin real quick. Nope. Not add texture. That is very sloppy, Ryan. You can do better. I was hoping I'd get away with it. Try this again. Okay, I'm not going to worry about perfection here. It's not really one of those shots that's worth all of that time. Crop tool, R key. Remember that. It's one of those shortcuts you use all the time. Also, holding Alt when you're cropping is going to crop from the center instead of from the corner. Okay, so Buddy's eyes here are closed. Uh, I'm just probably going to leave it. It's okay. Again, these are day of like kind of real life photos, so it's okay that they're not perfect. I mean, they're all day of real life photos. <laughs> so that makes almost no sense, but hopefully you see where I'm coming from. Going to take the saturation down in those greens a little bit. You can see what a big difference that makes. It's literally all I'm doing here, adjusting the white balance, getting things where I like it. And every photo that I adjust, I tend to just hit Command C, copy all those settings, and then move on to the next photo. Because more often than not, I'm going to be using it pretty quick. So it's just good to copy it. Okay, contrast can maybe go down a bit. These previews look terrible. If I zoom in though, it gets much sharper and better. Kind of frustrating. It'd be nice if Lightroom just showed me what the photo was going to look like. But hey, it's not like it's a professional photo application meant for editors. No, not at all. So zoom in, wait till it gets sharp, zoom out. Perfect. Okay, they're looking a little bit magenta. That's because the light is hitting this kind of beige tile. And so it's giving them a really warm skin tone color cast. So we could cool it down a little bit before, after. This one's looking pretty green because now they're standing on top of the grass. So what's ironic is they're all outside. They're all within a few feet of each other, but the white balance is so dramatically different from one photo to the next. It looks like there must have been clouds coming in and out because these feel more overcast, whereas the other photos were a lot more harsh. Or just a lot more sunshiny feeling. Okay, so if you don't like the green in this, literally the yellows and the greens, just take the saturation out. Most of the time that'll fix your problem. Like to me, it's just too much. We could even darken it down maybe. Or you can go the other way, sometimes brightening it up is what you need. I'm going to brighten up bottom of this image because it just looks very dark. Graduated filter, man. It's your best friend. And then add some magenta. Problem is they're standing on green grass next to these green bushes. So that's why their color, like the color of their skin is just very green. So we could grab our hue and adjust it a little bit. Not too much. And add a little bit of saturation back to it.
contrast down, whites up, brighten up the bottom of that photo, and then our groom, for whatever reason, is real dark, so we'll do the same thing on him. Not too much, because he's out of focus. Honestly, the more I look at this photo, the less I like it, so I'm actually going to delete it. Things are looking just a little bit too contrasty here. So I'm going to try and dial it in without losing too much of the pot. And then this part of the image, I might even grab a brush. Just really quick brush on those darkest areas. We're going to take the shadows up just a bit so I can darken everything else down. Before, after. And then I think this is just the preview being stupid, so we'll zoom in. Yep, now it's magically sharp again. Thank you, Lightroom. Say lovey. Nice shot. I like it. So generally, I go out of my way to avoid shooting somewhere like this for preps. Somewhere like this being somewhere that's grass surrounded by green, super harsh light. It'd be way better if they just stayed inside where the light was really beautiful and soft. But, you know, sometimes logistics don't allow that. So is what it is. I'll make the best of it. Bottom of this shot, very dark. So we're just, just going to grab our graduated filter. Brighten it up a little bit. Before, apre. That actually might look good as a black and white. So we'll go to our clean wedding presets and we're using black and white three. Brighten it up down here. And I can darken the whole shot. Straighten her out. Okay, so the world's harshest lighting. I think we're just going to go black and white because color is not going to feel good. But we'll do what we can. First, we'll start by kind of trying to even out the light a little bit. That obviously looks way too much. Contrast down, highlights down, shadows up, whites down, blacks up, and then we're going to just add some contrast back with our tone curve. Yeah, I mean, I could monkey with this forever. New plan. We are just going to embrace the beauty of life that is black and white. So we can take it back to that point. Black and white three. Then if you want to, literally just brush on every face. And the darkest area here. Reset it, and I'm just going to take the contrast down and the highlights down a bit. So, it's not perfect, but it kind of captures the moment. Then, of course, we have this other one. So, we'll just copy it, darken things down. Voila!
But oh, was that light harsh. Would have been great if they could have gone to somewhere. So basically what's happening right now is the sun is directly above them. And it looks like, if we try and find the shadows, that it's kind of in front of them as well. So they're squinting. We've got really hooded eyes. If we had shot in the other direction or just gone somewhere in the full shade, we would have had a lot softer light. would have been a lot easier and better looking. But it's OK. Not too bad. And again, the greens to me just looking a little saturated. So we'll play around and see if we can darken them down. Sure. Why not? cropping out our videographer friend. I love the concentration on this guy. It's just the best. It's actually a really cool shot. So let's try and adjust this white balance. It looks really red. That's better. Before, after. Still maybe a little bit red. So we could take our hue, shift the skin tone back. Maybe around there? Maybe. Ooh, that looks weird. We got some major red going on, I guess. The light's reflecting from his sandwich wrapper. By the way, that looks like a really good sandwich, doesn't it? Just me. So I'm just going to try and adjust the skin a little bit here. Before, after. It looks like we have a graduated filter or something. Don't know. Now, of course, this is actually sharper in real life. It's just Lightroom is loading a preview and it sucks. So just know if you're like, Ryan, that photo looks really just bleh. It's because it's a preview. Just have to trust. OK, so this is an example where we've got really, really bright highlights going on. And we could roll them off and just make it feel a lot more kind of romantic by doing so. So here's before, here's after. It's up to you whether you like that or you just want to keep it really, you know, nice and crisp. I'm going to go for it. And while we're at it, we'll just copy that. Maybe dial it back just a little. Lesson of my life. You think something looks good when it comes to editing your photos. Just assume that it looks a little bit too much. Dial it back to halfway. And you'll be grateful you did. Again, these don't look super sharp. That's because Lightroom is being a bother.
Okay, so let's talk saturation on skin. Now, it looks like their legs, because they're just not as bright, are a lot more saturated than their faces. So their faces, the skin tones look pretty good where they're at. But I am going to have to address the orange on their legs. So we're just going to grab a brush. Like a so. I'm going to reset the brush, holding Alt, Contrast down, and just cool it off a little bit. Now will get rid of the orange. Okay. Now she's a little dark in the frame compared to everything else, so I'm just going to grab our, you guessed it, radio filter, put it on her face. Now one other thing that I could do here, just because of the angle, it's kind of giving her a strange sort of effect on her chin, so I could grab my brush, go right underneath the chin, just take the shadows down. Obviously not that much, but a little bit. It's just going to add some contouring, make her chin more defined. Here's before, here's after. If I actually press O to see my mask and erase it off of her chin, it should be more effective. And just make sure you get the rest. Dial it back. I don't know if she's going to like this or not. It's actually not that flattering. I'm now noticing just because of the angle. But it's such a cute moment, so I don't know. You know what? That one's better. So we're just going to scratch. Scratch this one entirely. And use this. Gives us the same moment much more flattering to our beautiful bride. And I really don't like this super blue dress. We'll see if we can get rid of it. Good. That'll work. Before, apres. Yeah, it's nice when you occasionally get one and it's like, this really doesn't need much. And I'm just going to roll with it. Although, if we're going to be super picky here, we could just smooth out her skin just a little on the forehead. Takes two seconds, makes a difference. This is actually really dreamy. So I could intentionally keep it more like this and then brighten everything else and have more drama in the shot or I could brighten it up. I'm thinking we'll probably kind of keep it around there, sort of in the middle. So the background is brighter than the action, which is right here. So I'm just going to soften it, darken it down a little bit, hit our brush, hold down Alt to get to the eraser, and just erase it off of our subjects. Good. Before, after. Good. And I feel like the action is right here. So we're going to do the same kind of thing before, after. Kind of just draws your eyes a little bit more. Uh, 
Now this one, when we zoom in here, actually looks pretty good. If you have any questions as I'm editing, be sure to just leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to respond to every single one. Whether it's about a shortcut, my present haircut, what I think about the lovely mustache as far as facial hair goes. You know, important life stuff like that. Mm, I don't know what I want with this photo. Something feels off. For now, we'll just roll with that. This is beautiful. I actually don't want to touch it for fear I'll make it less beautiful. So I'm probably just going to leave it right there. Except for mom is a little bit dark. She's in shadow. So we'll reset this adjustment brush. Invert it and just brighten up mom a little bit. And the same with her hair is kind of blending into the background. So grab a brush. Take the shadows up just until I can see. Okay, so she's got kind of a highlight on the edge of her hair. So we'll grab our highlights and pull those all the way up. Pull our shadows down. And pull our whites up. So here's before, here's after. Just so you can separate it from the background. So pretty. So pretty, can't, can't even. And again, the same kind of thing. We'll just brighten up mom's hair, brighten up her hair. Contrast up, highlights, whites, pump those suckers. We could darken down the ceiling. Just because there's really nothing going on up there we need to see, so having it so bright is just more of a distraction than actually serving the photo. Another alternative, you could just brighten it up with a graduate filter like that. Now options, obviously I could keep it cropped in or I could use it as a wide. Hmm, probably wide actually. I like it dark and I'm just gonna brush on them because these are actually kind of some of the more important photos of the day. It's worth taking a couple extra seconds just to try something a little bit more creative. A little bit. Let's zoom in and see what it's like once Lightroom decides to play nice. Her skin looks really smooth, and I didn't actually do that. I don't know why. That's going down. But it almost looks like it needs to have some contrast added back in. So that's what I'm going to do. And a little bit more brightness on Mom, because she's still in the dark. I don't know. I'm not feeling it. I'm thinking let's go to black and white. Try that. And take our shadows way up. Blacks way up. Contrast way down. Try one of these. Yeah, something about her skin just does not feel like the luminance just isn't right. I don't know what it is. If you know what it is, let me know in the comments. We'll get there. I think that's looking better.
Okay, we'll roll with that. Just gonna darken down on this side a little bit. Just to even out our light. Love that. Very pretty. I'm actually going to make a virtual copy of this because I think that's a beautiful photo. And this one we'll do in black and white just so that she has some variety. And again, the same thing. Really pretty. Do not need to push it this far. And we could actually even make it darker on the right side too. That might add a little bit of drama to the shot. So let's just try it, see how we like it. So here's the non-dramatic and the dramatic. I actually like it. I think it's worth, worth grabbing. So we'll just grab those graduated filters, copy it over here. And then in this case, we're going to grab it and hit our brush, just erase it off of her face because we don't want her to be too dark and the flowers and stuff. Before, after. Good, and her face is still a little bit, a little shadowed, a little contrasty. So take the contrast down, maybe cool it off a little bit. It looks slightly too warm. Take our whites up. There. Before, après. And straighten it out. The lines must be straight. And then there was the first look. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived. Okay, so we've got really harsh light. I'm gonna take my highlights down and my shadows up a touch. And then I'm gonna grab my luminance, probably take the orange luminance down. That's gonna be responsible for our skin tones. So we're gonna to rescue them a little bit by taking the saturation up, luminance down. Just gonna make them feel a little bit less blown out. Let's just check before, after. Yeah, we're kind of in the zone-ish. Maybe slightly too far. Okay, and then I think because we've got such harsh light, we'll just roll it off, make it smoother. And then a little bit of dehaze might be just the ticket. Somewhere like that. So here's before, here's after. It's looking okay. I'll copy all of that. And for this photo, contrast down, whites up, invert. 
Actually, ironically, it almost made sense to have the background brighter and kind of blown out. Hey, like that. It's perfect. <laughs> okay, something about this doesn't feel right. There we go. That feels a lot better. I was just pulling the highlights too far back, losing too much contrast. I think there is much more of a sweet spot. Now we could also play around with the greens, just see if it looks better or worse by desaturating them or adding some saturation. I'm thinking we're going to stick with more saturation just so it feels a little bit poppier, but we'll also play with the hue of the greens to get them feeling a little more green and less puke-like. One last possibility. We could come down here to our green primary. We could try playing with that. There we go. That is feeling closer. I'm still not in love, but maybe I'm in like. Okay. Let's roll with it. Yeah, I'm liking that. That feels good. Unfortunately, it looks like Levi has some serious sensor dust, or more likely there's just some bugs in the air. So those are kind of fun things that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you know what? All of that worked for naught because the opacity was set so low. So let's just reset. All of these stupid spots. And try again. Also, this just looks way too overdone, so we're going to dial back the dehaze maybe a bit. Okay. Now let's try again. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, now this just looks unnatural. There's something that's being pushed too hard here. It might be from the vibrance. All of them. Still doesn't feel right. Maybe cool it off a little bit. Contrast up. Okay, that's ballpark. I love this guy. He just is the best. And I'm definitely not going to be doing this on every single shot, but the ones that it's really obvious, we'll just help him out a little bit. Those are kind of the same shot, so I'm going to remove this one. That's really beautiful. I think I'm going to do the same one in black and white. And we'll undo that crop. Love it. Very pretty. Now we could experiment with just making 
Everything else a little softer, a little darker around them. Before, after, and of course erase it off of them. Okay, virtual copy, command apostrophe, black and white three, that's kind of our chosen one for this particular wedding. Shadows down, whites down, blacks up. Dial it in, Ryan. Dial it in. Before. Hello. Come on. After. So they got options. I think those are very pretty shots. Love it. Oh, yes. So good. So, so good. Her back's just a little bit more saturated than his skin. I'm going to go in there, not worry too much about this, just desaturate it a little bit. This also I think would be really pretty in black and white. So I'm going to just copy the black and white settings. One of those. Hello. That's very pretty, but it also deserves to be in color. So we're not going to copy that. We're not going to copy that. It looks a little bit warm. So I'm going to cool it off and very slightly. Looks like they really lucked out with the weather because it was so harsh in the morning, but this light is a lot better to work with. Okay, so see how warm or just saturated her arm is? If I cool down the saturation, it'll get rid of some of that cool down the saturation, cool down the temperature, it'll get rid of some of that saturation. And we're gonna take the contrast down and the whites up. And hopefully we'll be able to get away with that and balance the photo out. It just felt too warm over there in particularly. In particularly, you can tell I'm not much of a multitasker. Now I took that one step too far, so we're just going to take it back to maybe there. I don't know. Honestly, I think that one would be better in black and white, period. I'm not loving it in color, so I'm going to try that. Pretty. Pretty awesome is what it is. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Love it. Just love it. Okay, for some reason, the bottom of this photo, brighter than the top, so I'm going to take a graduated filter, and you guessed it, just to even things out a little bit. And things are looking a little bit kind of pea-like, a little too yellow. White balance is everything. Like, I'm still no master at it, but the closer I get it, the better my results are. And that's why using a calibrated display is so helpful. When I first started out, I was editing on my laptop and the screen was pretty small. So I figured, oh, I'll just buy the cheapest 24 inch monitor I can. So I did. And then I would export the photos and I thought they looked really good on my computer and they just looked horrible on my phone. It was just the worst. And that's when I found out about displays and how much of a difference they make. 
Okay, what am I doing here? I'm just brightening everybody up. Take the contrast down. Maybe the shadows up. Oh, wow. Look at Dad. Is auto mask on? Yes. Okay, so that explains some things. Let's just erase that. Try again. Contrast all the way down. Whites up a little bit. I find that's just the kind of most transparent way to brighten up a part of the image without being super careful about the mask. So here's before, here's after. We're going to darken it down now. Can raise all the shadows up a little bit. And of course, our trusty radial filter. Before, after. Still not there, Ryan, still not there. So we're gonna try once more. Just taking the contrast down a little bit. Taking the highlights down a little bit. Basically, there's just too much contrast in this photo. Okay, it's getting closer. Over edited, maybe a little bit. Should I dial it back? Probably. About there. We have this beautiful sky. I really don't want to blow it out. So we're going to add a filter here, just pulling the whites back. Maybe add a little bit of dehaze even. Yeah, one more radial filter. Now when I zoom in and Lightroom pulls the full preview, it should feel a little better, but their skin feels super weird. I don't know if you guys agree. I'm gonna try desaturating it a little, raise the luminance a bit. Just figure out what feels right. Take the vibrance down, mm, that didn't work. Vibrance up, saturation down. That's better, I think around there. Might be that we're pulling the shadows up too much. Pull them back. Something about those skin tones, they just don't feel right. What is it? Sometimes that's just part of the process. You don't know why things don't look good. They just don't. You have to keep following your gut until it feels better. And then you come back later because most of the time your gut is wrong. <laughs> that is a quote by Ryan. Most of the time, I think something looks great. It's like, I fixed it. And <laughs> I come back and it's like, what a moron. This feels better. You know, it's funny, I'd swear that this was taken at TRU and Kamloops. TRU? Maybe. Whatever. Looks like it's Kamloops, but it's somewhere else. I think it's in Osoyas. Beauty. Man, those Mark IV photos, so much better. Just saying. You know, for a long time, oh look, a videographer camera. For a long time, I thought if I had just the right camera, my images would be so much better. And while it's true that you certainly do get better photos out of an expensive camera, like you really do, it is only a small part of the equation. Like, it's so easy to take crappy photos with a good camera too. You have to really figure out your lighting and your framing and all of that good stuff, okay. Let's focus on the fact that her eyes are closed, but they're open in this one, but dad's sunglasses are not. So, options. We could Photoshop somebody's eyes onto her. That seems exhausting. We could be like really sneaky. 
and see if we can just borrow someone else's eye. <laughs> I don't think that's going to fly. I really don't. <laughs> or we could just roll with it. Mm, it's so sad. Uh, I think we're just going to move on. We have one with her eyes open. It's just that dad happens to be wearing glasses. That's no big deal. These are all lovely. I don't think they need much of anything. I could actually play with the sky. Just press the J key to make sure nothing's blown out. And sure enough, we've blown the crap out of our sky. So let's roll that back. Roll back the river. Do, 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 do. Brighten it up again. The solution might be to just roll off our highlights like a so. Brighten everything up. Now if we press J, you can see we've got some black clipping but no white clipping. I'm okay with the highlights clipping a little bit, like that's okay. I just don't want to be super harsh clipping. So let's back it up and just see if that makes things better. Yes. It's the little things. The bare necessities of life will happen. They'll come to you. They'll come to you. So we're just going to go back. And fix our skies. And that is also going to fix our skin tones at the same time. Okay, maybe not on this one. This photo might be a lost cause. Maybe we'll do black and white. Yeah, that's actually kind of cool. I'm going to roll with it. The bare necessities of life will come to you. They'll come to you. They'll come to you. They'll come to me. They'll come to you. These feel maybe a little bit dark. Press J. We're still clipping like crazy. But it's not super harsh looking, so I think I can accept it. Okay, why are we not copying our earlier settings here, huh? With our nice rolled off tone curve. That's better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That might be worth doing a black and white. Okay, so first off, let's just focus on them a little bit. If we wanted, we could kind of enhance the background a little bit. And we should because we only have a couple of photo shoot shots. So we're just going to do a little bit of adding some texture, a little bit more saturation in the background. So parts I just want to bring out and make pop a little bit. 
And I'm just going to go on here really quickly and roughly. Kind of like that. Reset that brush. Just take the texture, the whites, the contrast up a little bit. Okay, and then their skin, they've got some shadows going on with like some deep reds in it. So just those couple of spots. Just going to brush on. Take the contrast down. Take the white balance down a little bit. Take it towards green a little bit and desaturate it a little bit. So here's before and here's after. Basically just smoothing it out. Before, after. Hello Lightroom. Somewhere around there, maybe. We might come back later. Cool. And this one I wanted to do in black and white. Okay, and then the foreground right here, very bright. Everything else, very dark. So let's grab a graduated filter. Pull it back. Stick it right around there. Just darken it down. Take the brush, erase it off this part of the image, and off of our couple. Okay. And we're back. That looks really nice. I'm thinking we're probably just going to leave it right there. love these presets. So much time and work went into creating them, but it just makes it so much easier when the colors look good and it just adds pop, but without changing things so much that I have to go in and worry about dress colors, whatever. They just work. That's the goal. The nice part is it's not super complicated. There's not a thousand different ones. There's four different looks, five different looks with three different intensities. So if you're making your own presets, that's what I personally recommend. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't make a gazillion of them. Just get a few different looks. Stick with those bad boys. You'll be more consistent in your work and your workflow will just be a lot easier. Okay, now I could just try coming down here to lens corrections, go to manual, wait, wait for it, not lens corrections, transform, go to vertical, and I can play around with making them slightly taller. So here's before and here's after, and then constrain crop. Somewhere around there. So here's before and here's after. Makes a difference. Got to find the middle ground and what's actually, you know, normal and not way too much. But with wide angle lenses, if you're shooting down on people, you do make them look a lot shorter than they actually are. And vice versa. So use that to your advantage, not your disadvantage. Thank you. 
I love this shot. It's so great. A little bit of bloat on her dress. So let's just pull it back. Okay, these are both very, very similar. So this one can be black and white. great. I might just brighten the center of the image just a bit. Just so they pop a little bit more. This one feels really funny just because we have way too much room underneath them. Also, it's really bright underneath them. That's the brightest part of the photo. So let's fix that first. Take the attention away from that a little bit. And then the skin looks a little bit weird, like HDR-esque. Might be because we pulled back the highlights too much. I don't know. It looks like when Levi took these photos, maybe he was holding the camera up. I don't know. So we just have way too much space in the bottom. So what I will do with these particular shots, most of the time I try and keep the original crop. We'll just go with a narrower crop if I can find one. Hello. Not a thicker crop, a narrower crop. Still too much. 16 by 9. That should be good. As you warm up your photo, just be aware you're going to take out or bring out more green naturally. Everything's going to feel more green. And their skin, for some reason, feels real funny in this shot. So we're going to start by getting the white balance kind of right for the background. Then I'm going to try worrying about their skin and see if I can do something about it. So I'll take the saturation until their skin looks okay. Maybe. Uh, probably around there. And then I'm going to try taking the saturation down in the greens and the yellows. It's okay. I'm not in love with it. I think this might be better as a black and white. And our lens corrections, our lens transformations are still on. So we'll undo that. Reset the crop. Not bad. Not bad, eh? Okay, we're going to want to fix this sky situation again. So, start by taking our vibrance down a bit. Roll off our highlights in the tone curve. Highlights down a bit, whites down a bit.
another thing we could try. Just grab the saturation in the sky. And don't do that. Instead, take our hue and just take it a little bit more towards purpley. I just feel like the hue of the sky is throwing me off. Hue's all wrong, right? Okay. Good. Before, Apre, they look a little bit orange. Somewhere around there. Okay, so the sky, way too bright compared to them. Easiest solution. Get rid of your radio filter that is accidentally screwing up the photo. And then try brightening them up. And that, my friends, does not look good. But don't despair. Probably the answer lies somewhere in here. Yeah, I think the blues are just a little too saturated. And we've definitely still got some weird adjustment layer things going on, so we're just going to uncheck all of these. It feels better. The bare necessities of life will come to you. You can see how much harder these photos are to get looking nice compared to the earlier photos, the earlier group shots. And honestly, that just comes down to the sky. I think the light just got a lot harsher. Look at our yellows. What a bad shade. Let's tweak these. We can either take them and make them warmer, or we can make them greener. We're going to go with greener. Somewhere around there. And then our highlights are looking real harsh. Overall, overall, we're just feeling harsh. Is what it is. Maybe add a little bit of green back. A little pop of color. Still not bad, here's before, here's after.
So in general, I don't really know why Levi took so much headroom in these shots. But if there's something cool in the sky above them, like if you're shooting and the forest is full of trees, by all means, do that kind of shot. If all there is is just empty, blown out sky, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, so maybe don't. You gotta feel it. Figure out what's right for you. Something about dad's skin tone just throws me off. Or maybe it's the black of their suits. Yeah, I think that's more what it is. Now, if you're thinking these are really soft, remember Lightroom, the amazing gift that it is, has decided not to use the previews properly. Although I could make them a little bit sharper. Okay, and we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, back to the fun stuff. I don't think there's many more of these, so we'll just have to really savor our photo shoot experience. It's the funnest part of the day to edit, and then it's done. It's like when you go to Disneyland. You're so excited for so long, and you're there for like two minutes, and then it's like, okay, it's time to go. <laughs> That's how I feel. Now here's the real question, which is better, Disneyland or Disney World? Leave your opinion in the comments below, because I would genuinely like to know. I spent much more time at Disneyland, so I can't be fair, can't be objective. I need an expert. Love it. 
just gonna brush on her dress to make sure we're not blowing anything out. We'll even take the texture up a little bit. Perfect. I'm thinking this is black and white. Oh yeah. Definitely. So there's two options. Make everything brighter or make everything darker. Or we go with the middle ground. I think we're going with the middle ground. Meanwhile, under the pine tree, Trying to make the background a little bit less contrasty so your eyes are drawn more to them. Sure. Let's do one in black and white. We don't have many photo shoot photos, so we'll get our bang for buck by doing a couple in black and white as well. This one, honestly, too similar, but I do like the smile and the laugh. However, it was taken at a weird angle, so start by turning on our transform tool. Try one of those, constraint crop, use before, and here's after. Now I've probably taken it a little bit too far, something like that, and I feel like this is definitely a black and whiter. Looks like we got some fringing going on. Oh, no, that's just Lightroom's weird preview. Maybe a little bit. Might be another black and white. I don't know. We can't do them all in black and white.
love this shot. I think it's really cool. Mostly the moment. <laughs> I'm a sucker for moments more than anything. Beauty. These are all very similar, so we'll do one in black and white. All right, and then, ladies and gentlemen, there was the reception, and it was, it was everything. And I'll just warm that up, get the blacks up, shadows up. We'll get there eventually. Trust me. It's about as good as I can get. So multiple ways to do details in terms of color. I mean, you could add a whole bunch of saturation, really add a bunch of pop, or you can go the other way, and really make things desaturated. I like to just sort of go somewhere in the more natural zone. And we do have some really high contrast scenes here, so we're just going to roll off our highlights like we've been doing. tell what an extreme difference there is in white balance because over here by the pool on top of that tile everything is so warm and red and then here we have green crazy crazy amounts of green That's why detail shots get a different treatment from regular shots. Okay, okay. So this one's kind of interesting. It's like this side of the photo, very blue. This side of the photo, very orange. So I'm going to grab a graduated filter and hopefully fix that problem. But it's taking the temperature down on that side to even it out from one side to the other. Somewhere around there-ish, and then I can warm up the whole photo. And in theory... That'll make it feel better. World's sweetest grandma. This one's kind of repetitive. I think I'm going to remove it.
All right, ceremony time. Let's go. Okay, so we got this super bright spot that we're going to have to correct right here. A little bit on them. Okay. Good. Somewhere around there. So again, if you ever have skin that's just too orange looking, too saturated, just take it and take the white balance down and that'll take the saturation out. Before, after. And the reason their skin is so saturated and warm compared to the rest of the background is because they're in the shade and it, they're probably also on that patio which is reflecting up light onto them <laughs> Every time I see this moment, I laugh. It's just the best.
Okay, that photo doesn't really show much, so we're going to get rid of that one. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. It's kind of interesting. The length of time it takes to edit a wedding normally takes me between three and four hours. But honestly, it really depends on just the quality of the light of the day and how good of a job was done in camera. Because if there's not much to fix and the photos are just like, oh, this preset looks good, adjust the exposure and you're done. It's pretty quick, a couple of seconds per photo. But when there's things that are really just crazy and the light is very harsh, there's just so much more work you've got to do. So like this, our bride is the brightest part of the photo. Everything else so dark by comparison. So we're going to have to just even out the light. Brighten things up. Contrast down a little bit. Blacks down a little bit of saturation maybe. And then dial it back because most of the time I go too far. Like this photo. If you were taken on a cloudy day, be quick and simple. But because we've got such crazy light going on, it's a process. And that's where keeping your edit simple really helps. Love it. Very, very nice.
we can be very grateful that the ceremony lighting is actually pretty even and nice. This might be more of a black and white. So because we got some harsh light, I could roll off the highlights a little bit. Yeah, that's much better. Just a slightly softer effect. In case you didn't know, the J key, if you hit it in Lightroom, will show you what is being clipped, whether it's black or white. So anything that is pure white will show up as red, anything that is pure black will show up as blue. So it can be helpful just to check and make sure you're not clipping things too bad. Doesn't mean nothing can ever be clipped, but it just at least lets you know you're doing it. And it can also help you set the white point. So I can take this white, take it all the way up until I start to get Okay, in this case, <laughs> never mind, it's not showing up as red, it's showing up as blue as well. So, or it's just not showing up at all. It's quite odd. Quite odd indeed. Okay, well sometimes Lightroom just doesn't work. How about that? But in theory, you can use it to set the white point. You drag it up until you start to see some stuff clip, and then you kind of go right below that point. Okay, so what do we have going on here? A couple is nice and bright, but this side of the photo is actually pretty dark, so I'm just going to brighten it up. Lower the contrast a little bit and cool it down because the skin tones are kind of oversaturated. And then again, here is kind of dark too. And our sky. Before, after. Love it. 
crazy how the colors change. I wonder if that's a different camera. If I press L, oh, hello. Press the I key, I can see what lens he was taken on. But not what camera. So, this is a black and white because the color is real weird. Stupid bugs. What do you think you're doing? Okay, maybe a little less saturation. Four, after. Yeah, take it too far. It's more like real life. Fun fact, on your keyboard, hit plus and minus to adjust the exposure, hold shift, and you can do it in even greater increments. Mom doesn't look happy there. I think I'm actually gonna get rid of it. Just because we have some other great shots of mom. Now we already have a hand shot. I feel like this one isn't really adding much to the photo, to the photo isn't really adding much. I might crop in so we kind of have a close up like that. Darken down. And it looks like he has a little chunk of hair that we can just help him out. There we go. Better.
These are my favorite post kiss photos I think I've ever seen in my entire life. They're just hilarious. Just got to fix her dress because it's reflecting all that green light up from the bush. I love it. I can't tell what he's crying about, but I'm very happy for him. It's very sweet. And those crazy cobblestones are just making things so red. That's better. If it looks wrong, check your white balance. Chances are your white balance is also wrong. At least that's what I find with myself. <laughs> Grandma is so happy. I love it so much. So much. guy looks like really cool Santa. Like if Santa decided to join a Harley gang, that's what that guy would look like.
Okay, so this one, obviously our white balance totally off. So we'll fix that, take our contrast up, a little bit more saturation. Probably saturation up in the yellows a bit, and then down in the reds. Is it perfect? Heck no. Is it okay? Maybe. We're gonna have to crop in here. Yeah, okay, I can deal. We're just gonna make the background a little bit darker. Like so, and take the texture down. Clarity down a little bit, dehaze. There, so before, after, press O. See if I can do a little bit better job. Good enough. Okay, so we already have cupcake photos outside, so we'll get rid of that one. Okay, so this, we've got super blown out highlights. Let's go ahead, roll off our whites like that. Make it more creamy. Next, let's take our highlights down, see what we can recover. Zoom in so our actual preview loads. So we got a lot of like lens flare situation going on right in here. So we could try actually just exaggerating it, add a lens flare. Something like that. But in this case, let's try getting rid of the warmth. And just make it like a stylistic effect. I don't know. Is it better than just trying to keep it? Probably not. Alternative, we just darken it down. Life is better for everyone. Sometimes you don't know till you try, right? Okay, this one, I think if we take our yellows down a little bit, our greens down maybe.
And this is the part of the night where things can kind of slow down for editing because you got to adjust the white balance for like every single shot. Why? Because it's changing so quick with sunset. Now, quick note, if you're going to take photos of beautiful things, just watch for the background. Moving this walker would have made a huge difference. Now one of the things I don't really love about using a 7200 for shots, like Levi really relied on it for this wedding, which is good because you're less obtrusive, but at the same time it kind of has this fake feel about it, like this just doesn't feel real, and that's because it was using a really long lens, it's compressing the background and the foreground, and so things just don't look the same way as they do to your eye. Oh, hello, did not want to do that. Beautiful shot though. It probably would have been hard to get that same kind of magic if you're right up in their face. So I'll give it to them. I have no idea what dad just said, but apparently it was pretty bad. <laughs> Maybe he told an even worse joke than I told you earlier. This guy looks like a fun guy. You know? Okay, these are very similar. I don't know if we need both, but it is dad and mom. So I think we're going to keep it in there. amazing how much better the color is when your light is good like now that it's kind of sunset and the light is just so much more soft everything just looks better
This just cracks me up. Oh, I've been wondering why their skin is so warm in some of these shots. It's because they have these lights above. And as it's getting darker, it's becoming more and more obvious. So we'll cool them down. And we can warm everything up. Okay, so before I go into all these dance photos, I'm just going to take a few seconds trying to get the greens dialed in right. At least it's just a matter of combining the hue and the saturation and the luminance until I get it where I want it. I'm going to go with a darker green. That'll just make all of the colors pop a little bit more. And I also desaturated it. So hopefully now the rest of these can be done pretty quickly and easily. And it's not going to look way too overly edited. I don't know. I'm going to sync that across to all these dancing photos. Just see how we go.
This one I don't think really does anything for the shoot, so we're going to get rid of that. <laughs> These guys do not look happy. I just realized that. Love it. You know what I like even better than great dance photos? Great dance photos with a tripod in the back of them. That's just my favorite kind of dance photo, yo. Pretty much every wedding I photograph, I'm like, man, I hope that there's going to be a tripod here. Without it, I don't know what I'll do. I could do some of these in black and white, maybe this one, just for kicks. Kind of cool. Then I'm going to use this brush I have, Brooding Dehaze Darken. Where are you? Just going to make everything on the outside pretty dark and hazy. Before, after. We'll try it on this color photo. Just does a little something to kind of isolate them from the background a little bit. I mean, we could play around since this is the couple's first dance. Let's just see what happens if we experiment with some different coloring. Maybe more of an airy feel, but muted. Yeah, I like that.
Just something in the way that the light is catching his skin. Kind of weird. Let's smooth it out. And then the dance party. I like that the girls totally separated from the guys for their own dance party. <laughs> the guys are just having a drinking contest or something. The girls are like, we're going to party anyways. Don't need you. It's 
especially this mama. She knows where it's at. Try and save the sky a little bit. Although it's already blown out, so we're just going to go with a dehaze. Take the clarity down, just make it a little smoother so it's not so obviously blown out. Okay, that's really, really harsh light. I'm just going to get rid of it because we have other photos of cupcakes. This guy's giving an imaginary piggyback to somebody. <laughs> oh, no. He's in the middle of a dance move. Obviously, Ryan. What's wrong with you? He wasn't giving an imaginary piggyback ride. That would be absurd. Only you would do that. I kind of wish he was, though. That's the sign of a true party. When people are giving fake piggyback rides. <laughs> mm, gotta have that Ken doll. Oh yeah, look at that dreamy face. Reminds me of me. <laughs> is he actually that tan or is there something going on with this preset? Nope, he's actually that tan. He's like a, a cocoa cream. That's his ethnicity. Cocoa cream. Not gonna lie, this looks like a hilarious party. people the bouquet toss to end all bouquet tosses this girl wants it like <laughs> look how prepared she is she's on a mission I think she gets it too doesn't she yeah okay so she's moving positions she's trying to figure out where the right spot is I like it she's been strategizing She's in a relationship and she wants it at the next level. Oh, and now she's over here. How'd she know? How did she track it? It's 
straight to her. Look at the jump. That's full commit right there. Full commit. Best day of her life. I love it. You know, if you're going to go for, some, for something in life, you go for it. Own it. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, is that Kendall, man? Yes, it is. Ah, oh, geez, it just came full circle. Heck, it's in his hair and his suit. That's a fly. Again, I have no idea what this was, but it looks hilarious.
We're just blazing through now. Already at the cake smash. Living the dream. Fifty mil. Interesting. I would have thought it was more than a fifty mil. To me, these look like eighty five at least. What do you think? Is this correct? Is it actually a 50 mil? It just seems so tight for a 50. Oh, here it is. The moment you've all been waiting for. One man with a dream and a pool and too much beer. <laughs> he got so high too. <laughs> Oh man, that's the best part. Like, look at that hang time. It's incredible. <laughs> so worth it. And this guy again, just like, what an idiot. <laughs> oh, it cracks me up. Having not actually photographed this wedding, it makes it even better because I have no idea what the context is and what led to this. I just get to guess. And whatever the actual truth is, I'm sure it's far more awesome. And then these two clowns. Thought they were like starting a rave and everybody was going to go and join them in their pool frenzy. And then only two of them went. Which I find even more hilarious. <laughs> Only after did he realize he had no clothes to change into for the rest of the night. <laughs> ah, shoot. But their journey will be forever remembered in the photos. I'm guessing this is when they pretended they were going to throw him in the pool. Maybe. Maybe. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. We've completed this benchmark assignment. One wedding, finito. Seven hundred and six hundred and seventy-five photos complete. So, what's the process now? Well, I back up. I take a quick break just to rest my eyes, reset, whatever. Maybe hit him in the morning because it's nighttime. I don't know, but really. All that has to be done is go back to very first photo from the very top. And I'm just going to go through them all in library view. So I'm not going to go through and develop module. And the reason is because if you're in library mode, you can actually flip through the photos a lot faster. I like it so, right? Whereas if I were to go into the develop module, there's going to be a pause of a second or two in between each photo. And so I can't really do this quite as quickly. So I go into the library, go into loop mode, Double click here. And I'm just going to go through and I'm going to see if there's anything that stands out that needs correcting like immediately. So, for example, that photo needs exposure brought up. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to take the exposure up a little bit. It's going to be a bit of a delay in the time that it takes to show up, but that's okay. This one again needs a little bit more exposure. A little exposure. And we're just going to do the exact same thing for each of these. So, 
take our highlights down, take our exposure up a little bit. This one I'm going to have to go into the crop module because I'm noticing now that it's crooked. Head back over here. And that's basically the entire thing. I'm just going to go through. If something stands out to me, I'm going to fix it. If not, I'm going to keep going. And of course, if there's a photo that I reach that I'm like, oh, this could really use this creative thing, well, then I'll do that too. This could be a little bit darker, a little bit brighter. And when you're doing it this way, sometimes things stand out to you that just didn't stand out before. Especially when you're looking at the photos quickly like this, you can really see like, okay, there's a major white balance shift here. It's just too warm all of a sudden. So we're going to cool it down. That feels better. And that's pretty much the whole process. So doing it at this speed, I'm thinking about 20, 30 minutes probably, and I'll be through it. I'm not going to make you sit and watch the whole thing because really there's not much to see. It's just this. Going through saying, okay, so these hands, a little bit too saturated. So we'll just take care of that. And we're back. Okay, so this looks really green. Let's take care of that. Something like that. We can maybe warm it up a little too. Much better. Just going to copy the white balance because that's the only thing I'm really adjusting here. And a little more contrast. And it turns out my iMac seems to be handling this just fine, so I don't even need to use the library module. And that's why I'm not going back. So I even learned something on this tutorial. On my old laptop, however, I can guarantee you this would not be the same experience. So that's a little hack for you. If you're having trouble, go into the library module. It'll be a lot faster for you. Okay, so major white balance issue here, way too warm and too dark compared to everything else. So 
That's better. Now this photo I just don't think is actually that nice. <laughs> in hindsight, he's about to say something. She's kind of like in mid laugh and not super flattering. And just the way her arm is right up against her body is just not super flattering. So we're gonna delete that one. This is kind of my last call at the same time. Hmm, might keep this, but I'm gonna crop it. So you can see now Lightroom is starting to struggle because I went too fast, I guess. Let's go back into the library. And you can see how much faster it is 
no load time whatsoever.
Maybe this one's going to be a lot better in black and white. Mm-hmm. 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 And do one of these. So really most of the mistakes that I make come down to correcting the white balance. What looks good to your eyes, at first you then look back and you're like, what was I thinking? That was way too cold. Be way better if it was warmer. So just go through, double check your white balance and it's amazing what a difference it makes once your eyes have had a break.
<laughs> the invisible piggyback shot. We meet again. I know that's not what he was doing now, but I'm going to just pretend in my mind like it was. This guy just lost in the bush. I don't know how I didn't even notice this when I was editing it the first time. There we go. All right. So we did our second pass. Things are looking good. Now, if there were some photos that I really wanted to spend some more time on and maybe add some color grading, I could. I think this one I'm going to keep pretty natural. So not going to do much in the way of color grading here because I think that the colors are pretty nice. But that would be the step after this. If there were some photos like that, I think in this case, we're just going to export it nice and simple like that. So I'm going to select all these photos in the way I like to export it. I go to the same folder that I've put all of the wedding inside of. We're going to call this one exports. I'm going to create a new, we're going to leave the file name exactly the same. In the past, I used to rename these to whatever the couple's name was, but now I keep it the same name because that way if they say, hey, can you put this one in black and white or put this one in color or switch my hair so that there's whatever it's red instead of pink <laughs> then i actually know which photo they're talking about it's not like hey can you take photo 421 and then i have to go and find out which photo 421 was so that's why i do it that way 
I'm going to put it in this subfolder. We're going to call it full res. And the way that I like to do it, 85% quality and full size export. We're going to sharpen for matte paper, set that to low. And then we're going to hit export. And the reason I export full res is because then I'm going to upload these photos to Pixie Set. And Pixie Set allows me to send the online gallery to the client. And it'll also take care of creating web size copies of the photos as well. In the past, I used to export one as full res and then another one at 2048 pixel length. And that was for Facebook and Instagram. But now I don't have to do that because Pixie Set takes care of all that for me. So I'll leave a link below if you want to sign up for Pixie Set. Um, really, you get like 100 megabytes free or something like that, or a gigabyte, enough to do one wedding or an engagement shoot. And then after that, if you want to upgrade, you can. Just a tool worth trying out, seeing what works best for you. Okay, so with all of that said, that's my entire wedding workflow from start to finish. I skipped absolutely nothing. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If it was helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe if you want more content like this. And I hope, I hope that you can take this and create something even more awesome in your own work. So look forward to hearing from you. Download some presets, whatever it is that you need. I'll leave some links below. Take care. See you in the next video.